Hey, so we're here with Lee Strobel on the set of his new film that's coming out here in April 2017, The Case for Christ, and it's based on his incredible story of his journey uh, investigating the claims of Christianity and then coming to faith in Jesus Christ yeah. through his investigation, and he's just got this profound um, life story. And uh, so you wrote that into a book called The Case for Christ. Right. I think it released around the year 2000. Yeah, 1998. Right? Yep. 1998. And, uh, and that book has gone on to be read by millions of people, yeah. impact, uh, impacting so many lives. The story of it has uh, impacted so many lives. Mm. And so I'd love for you just to share a bit of, like, like what was the moment mm. that, you know, you, did, you said you did years of, of study and research, yeah. two years into right. the claims of Christianity, um, as the legal editor for the Chicago Tribune, but then what was that moment for mm. you uh, that kind of led you to, all right, this is this is for real? Yeah, you know, it was. If your picture scales, you know, and and over time during this year and nine month investigation, the evidence um, you'd put it on the scale, so to speak, and weigh it. And uh, you know, at first it was kind of even because uh, there's arguments on both sides, and you begin to look at those, and then you realize that the scale is is slipping in one direction. And it was really on November the 8th of 1981 that I realized the scale had gone the whole way, mm -hmm. that it would require more faith to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian because the evidence for, for instance, the resurrection of Jesus, for his execution, the early accounts that can't be written off as merely legend, the empty tomb, the eyewitness accounts and, and um, so forth, and the corroboration of those, is just a, an avalanche of historical data. And so, you know, we, we, we do this all the time in our lives. We weigh evidence, even informally, like how did we know these chairs were safe to sit on? I mean, they could have been faulty. We could have fallen on our butts, you know. But we kind of do an evaluation. They look sturdy. We kind of felt them a little before we sat down. We're in a place where they have no uh, motivation to embarrass us by anything. Other people have sat on them and not had a problem. So based on that evidence, you take a step or a sit and you sit on the chairs and they're okay. And it's similar for uh, in investigating anything, but especially in the faith area, where you, you, know, you look at the evidence and then you take a step of faith, but it's not a blind leap. It's a step in the same direction that the evidence is pointing. That's logical, that's rational. And um, um, so I came to that point where I realized the arrows of evidence are pointing in a direction. I could either swim upstream against the evidence, but that's not rational, it doesn't make sense. What makes sense is take a step of faith in the same direction the evidence is pointing and put my trust in Christ. So what I'd love to ask you is, and, and your wife Leslie became a Christian before you, that's, right. that's what led you down this path of that's investigating right. in this first place is, you know, the, the relationship that's most important to your marriage. Yeah. Uh, so what, what began to change in her life that made you start investigating? And then for you, you know, what, what did you see change in those coming days and weeks? Did yeah. you see a difference? Because, you know, we know Christians aren't perfect. Sure. We're, you know, Christians are far from perfect. Uh, I say that as a Christian myself. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's clearly a difference in your life. Yeah. And, and you see that all over the world yeah. with people who come to faith in Christ. So what right. was it for you? What right. did you see? Well, you're right about my wife's role in all this. In fact, in the movie, The Case for Christ, you really get not just the, the evidential side, but it's really a love story. Uh, and it's a, there's other aspects of the story. It's a father-son story. It's a, a crime story. It's a newspaper story. And uh, it is a spiritual journey as well. Uh, so it's about the heart as well as the head. Uh, and it was really the heart of our relationship. You know, we met when we were 14 years old. So we were childhood sweethearts. We got married young. I was 20. She was 19. At our wedding, we couldn't even drink champagne. We had to drink milk because we were too young to drink the champagne. So um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we've known each other our whole lives. And I've always pictured Leslie as a beautiful rose, uh, but a rose that, that in retrospect was closed. But roses are still very pretty that way. It's a very, very pretty flower, even when the petals are closed. But after she came to faith, it was like there was a blossoming and the flower opens up and you begin to see, wow, there's a whole other dimension to this flower. It's so much prettier. And um, that was what happened with her. As she came to faith and I began to see her values and her character uh, more aligned with Jesus uh, than self-interest. Um, it was winsome and it was attractive, the way she loved me and the kids, the way she 
instead of freezing me out after an argument, that she would reach out to me and, mm -hmm. and, and attempt to reconcile and so forth. So there were these little things that told me that something is happening positively in her life. She says it's God. I don't believe in God. So I better either, I better figure this out. Mm -hmm. And that was a big motive in checking things out. And then my life, as you say, you know, began to change after I came to faith, not overnight, but over time, as my values and character and morality were um, being changed by God. Um, you know, and sometimes it's hard to articulate the ways in which it's changed because you didn't know me back then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you didn't know me when I was literally winning awards for investigative reporting, but on Saturday night was drunk in the snow in an alley. Wow. So, you know, how do you explain the difference? And the way I usually do it is through my daughter. My daughter, Allison, was five years old when I came to faith. All she knew that first five years of her life was a dad who was absent, angry, um, coming home drunk, kicking holes in the wall out of frustration and anger. Uh, that's all she knew. But starting on that Sunday when I put my trust in Christ, over time, she, st she started to watch. Something was different with dad. Hmm. Something's changing with dad. Something's better with dad. And, and she watched and she listened. And it took about four or five months. And then finally, one Sunday, she came up first to her Sunday school teacher and then up to Leslie. And she said, I want God to do for me what he's done for daddy. Hmm. And so at age five, she became a follower of Jesus, received this free gift of his grace. And now she's 40 years old and the mother of two of our grandchildren, married to a seminary graduate. She's a novelist. She writes fiction that always has the message of Jesus embedded in it. Um, she's taught at Christian schools, and we're now the best of friends. And same with my son, who came to faith at a young age but took an academic route. Now he's got a Ph.D. in theology from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland, and he's a professor of theology at, at uh, Biola University, one of the largest Christian universities in America. So God has really changed our family. Uh, and now I look at our grandchildren, and my 10-year-old granddaughter, Abigail, just went on her first missions trip. And she led another little girl to faith in Jesus wow. on that trip. So here you have a family that, whose whole orientation has been changed and now rippling down through the generations. Mm. And you think back and say, what would have happened had we not found Christ? I don't like to think that way. I don't like to look down that path because it would not have been a pretty path. But now I can say that with Christ in our lives, you know, I, I see a, a future. I see a family that loves each other, that cheers for each other, that uh, prays for each other. And so, so God really has impacted not just us, but next generations as well. Wow, that's so cool. It's amazing to hear the story and uh, to hear that, you know, there's so many differences and uh, benefits that, yeah. that you've just experienced internally and, and just through your relationships. Again, far from perfect, but, but yet completely different mm -hmm. than the direction that you were going. Yeah, you know, the Bible and says so. in 2 Corinthians that uh, when you come to faith in Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. And that's true. There is a newness. And, there, and, and to have a five-year-old be able to see in her dad this difference mm -hmm. uh, tells you something's really going on. Yep. Uh, yeah, I love that. So I'm so excited for you guys to see uh, this story on the big screen and uh, theaters around you. Um, it's coming in April 2017. And um, just excited and praying for how this will impact many more families.